Okay, so we're going to get started with uh, exercise 226 today, which is essentially the exact same thing that we did last class. The difference is that instead of cutting a section traditionally through the building, we're going to be cutting a plan through the building. Uh, but all the steps are the same. All the things that I'm going to do are the same. So it's a good repeat. If you didn't quite capture uh, or internalize what I did last class, you get another shot at it today, which is good. Um, welcome, by the way, to the last week the last real week of school before finals. Um, if you're coming back next fall, everything changes. And apparently, there isn't a finals week anymore. Your final is in the last week of class. And they cut two weeks out of the semester. So it's a 16-week semester instead of an 18-week plus a finals week. So it's all messed up. And do pay attention, by the way, to the start times of your classes. Because like my 135 class doesn't start at 8 AM. It starts at 7.55. And so they've messed with everything. So just be aware in the fall that everything is different. So um, yeah. Anyway, I wasn't particularly happy about that either. But it is what it is. I don't have any power in that decision. Um, so we are, uh, we're, we're rapidly pushing toward that final, final that's due. Um, we, uh, today, we're going to do the, the plan view which means you will have done the plan, the section, and the elevation, potentially. Uh, remember that two of those three views are due as part of your final. So I'm expecting those to come out uh, as part of your final. And of course, the four big renderings, the interior and exterior day render, and the interior and exterior night render. Remember, of course, that renderings don't happen quickly. They take time to complete. So if you wait and try to do them all on Monday, next Monday, a week from today, chances are you probably won't finish. So you want to have those, or at least a version of all of those renderings ahead of time. And I think one of the things that's also important as you go into the final is to recognize that not all the renderings are going to be perfect. And what you do is you pick the worst one, and you make it the best one. And then you look back at your renderings, and you pick the worst one, and you make it the best one. And you keep working your way up. So the whole body of work gets better, as opposed to you could spend you know, 100 hours making one of them perfect, and the other four are absolutely terrible. Or you could have all of them pretty good. So think about that balance as you go into this. Because it's easy to get obsessive about getting that one view just right, and to the exclusion of the other views, uh, or the other times of day, et cetera. So just plan ahead. Um, on Wednesday, uh, I'll talk through a few other things relating to um, Rhino and V-Ray and whatever. But most of the time, you'll have just to work, because that's probably what you need more than anything else. Uh, in fact, most of you are just working now and ignoring me altogether. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of the way it is at this point in the semester, and, and I get that. Um, but I still want to emphasize this. Remember uh, when I was at Berkeley and talking to people uh, about what they thought was most valuable, uh, the one thing that they said that they wished they had known more was how to get out of Rhino and into Illustrator really easily to scale. And so this is very much that process that we're going to go through today. Um, just like with the section view that I did last class, um, when, we, when we cut the plan view, it is a destructive thing that we're doing to the model. So you want to make sure you do a save as. That's absolutely critical. So I've, I've even made it important enough such that I'm going to do it in front of you to try to emphasize this a little bit more. So I'll go to File and then Save As. And this is now going to be my plan Can view. Can you use the same one you used last week, which is destroyed, or do you have to stop? I would prefer not to use the same one. Um, you could probably use your elevation view. That would be fine. But I wouldn't use your section view, because you've already split the model and you've already exploded. And this time, we're going to be exploding it in a different direction. Um, so I have my, my master site. This is now my plan. I'll go ahead and click on Save. And so now I have the plan view. That's good. That means I can actually start to destroy this model and not feel guilty about it. Uh, so the first thing that I need, just like the last time, is I need a very large square that's larger than my overall um, model. So I'm going to draw this rectangular plane corner to corner, bigger than everything in the scene. There it is. That was probably a little bit large. I could probably tighten that up a little bit if I worked in the top view instead. <coughs> Zoom out here. There we go. So I'm going to use rectangular plane corner to corner. And there we are. 
And I'm going to look at my model in the perspective view here. And at this point, I have to kind of decide how, um, at what, where do I need to cut this, um, zoom in here a little bit more, where do I need to cut this plan view through my building? And so depending on your building, and this is something that's going to vary a great deal depending on your particular building, you have to decide where that, where that really, that plan view needs to be cut. Um, for me, I have a split level, and it would probably be nice if that plan was cut through this level, kind of the split level, such that I'd be seeing down through the stairs and seeing the lower plan uh, and also the outside patio. That seems like a pretty good place. Typically, a plan view is cut at four feet off the ground. It's cut at four feet off the ground because that's above kitchen cabinets. It cuts through almost all the windows in a building, cuts through all the doors. It's not high enough to interfere with the upper cabinets in a kitchen, so it's kind of a sweet spot. So in terms of accuracy here, I'm not going to worry too much about getting it precisely at four feet, but that's kind of the target for what I'm looking for. Mine's actually probably going to be a little bit less because of the split level. I'm going to work in the right view here because it's easier to see where I'm cutting through, and I'm going to move that plane up. Let me turn on ortho here for a second. I'm going to move that plane up to right about there. And that's going to allow me to cut through the building, see this room, but also to see the, the room below and the outside patio. So I have that set up now with my plane. It's cutting through my building at its appropriate spot. That's good. Now I'd like to start by being able to see this plan view in the first place. So this is where I'm going to use section tools again. <coughs> so I'm going to go up to the section tools menu, and I'm going to go to create. So, or I could type in st create is the command. Select objects to section, press enter for all visible objects. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type all. And then I'm going to deselect that large rectangular plane. So I'll hold down control and deselect it. And I'll hit enter. Now at this point, I have to go through my options. So I have direction is x axis or y axis. Well, this is kind of a problem because I actually want it to be on the z-axis looking down. So instead of worrying about x, x or y, I'm actually going to change the view. So instead of looking in the perspective view, we're going to look in one of the other views. So I'll get to that. The rest of these options are all fine, but I do want to make sure that solid mode is set to surfaces. So that's good. Solid mode is set to surfaces. Now, to actually cut the section, instead of working in the perspective view or the exterior view or what have you, I'm going to work in this right view. I'll make that the active view. And now I can cut in the y direction. So I'll change my direction to the y axis. I'll hit Enter. And conveniently, it's in the wrong direction here. All right, I have to do that again. Sorry about that. ST create should have been the x axis. Sorry. One more time. ST create all except for that rectangular plane. Good. I'll hit enter. I'm going to leave it in the x axis. That's good. I'll hit enter. All right. Now it's pointing down. So now all I have to do is snap to some place on that big rectangular plane. There it is at one of the corners. That'll work. And it's now created the section. Looking down, it's ST00 again. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter when I'm done. Now, in the perspective view here, actually, let me go ahead and set it as the perspective view. There we go. I'd like to temporarily see this section cut. So I can go ahead and type ST view sections. And I can pick from my list ST00. And I want to see that section in the perspective view. So I'll go ahead and type perspective. And I'll hit Enter. Now this large plane here is still blocking my view. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that for right now. And now if I were to look in here at my building, well, there it is. Let's see if I can select the block. 
There we go. All right, that looks like it's cut at about the right place. I'm pretty happy with that. That's good. So now I need to look at it in the top view. So instead of in the perspective view, I'll double click. I'm going to look at it in the top view. And I'm going to go ahead and type st view sections. It's going to be st00 again. And I want to see that in the top view. And now I can zoom in on my plan, something like that. I could switch this into shaded mode so that I could see what it looks like. I could also switch it into rendered mode if I wanted to see it in rendered mode. Though I typically don't spend too much time in the rendered mode because I don't think it's that accurate. Uh, so I'll go back to shaded mode. There we go. So I now have this view that's set up to look as my floor plan. I'll go ahead and save my view. Let me go to set view. I'll go to named views. I'm going to save this as plan, or maybe plan 01, for example. That allows me to return to this view a little bit later on. Just as I did with the section view, the next part of this is finding out what this view looks like. Where's the camera boundary? So I'll click on the little triangle here. I'll go to set camera and then show camera. And remember, I can't see it in this view, but I can see it in the perspective view. So there's the camera. I'm going to create a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be the three points. I'm going to snap to this point and that point and right there. That gives me a quarter of the view. And I'm going to scale that as a regular scale from this corner by 2. Now I have the full viewport selected. This is so that I can do the make 2D of that viewport. I'll double click on perspective. I'll jump back into my plan view. And I'll go ahead and type make 2D. Select objects to draw. We're going to draw all of them. Press Enter when done. I'll go ahead and press Enter. This is going to be of the current view. I'm going to maintain the source layers, and I'm going to show my hidden lines. All of that sounds good. And I'll go ahead and say OK. This is then going to make that view for me as a line drawing. This is what we're going to export to Illustrator. So and of course, it takes a little while to do it. OK, so did the Make 2D. I'm going to switch over into the plan view. I don't have a plan view currently showing, so I'll sacrifice my right view. Let me go to Set View. Um, let me go to the top view. And there is my plan view right there as a line drawing. So I don't care about any of the rest of this outside of my, my little circle. So we can go ahead and delete all of this. And I can use this viewport as a, as a frame to trim off the extra little bit of land there and whatever that piece is. And we can delete the rest of this. And I end up with this nice little viewport right here. I can move this to point zero, 00. Remember, it has to be at 0, 0, 0 to be exported. Let me type Z for zoom, followed by S for selected. There it is. And I'll, I'll export this to Adobe Illustrator. I'll go to File, Export Selected. And let me put it into today's folder. This would be the spring of 2018. And this would be. Um, And I'm going to change my type to be Adobe Illustrator. 
and I'll go ahead and click on save. My export options, 48 to 1. I'll go ahead and say, okay, that's now exported my plan view. We'll come back to that view in just a little bit. That's ready for, for um, Adobe Illustrator. <coughs> uh, the one other thing that sometimes is useful, or, or you could choose to export as well, is you could get contours of this site. So if we wanted to put the, the contours of the elevations in, uh, we could go ahead and create that. I'm going to go back into the plan view, ST clear all views, and I'm going to contour this surface and that little surface there. I'm going to go ahead and type in contour. Uh, and actually, before I do that, let me create a new layer to hold those contours. Contour. And we could say my base point is there. We need to go up in the Z direction. So let me go to set view, go to the right side view. So I can go straight up. There it is. And now I have to decide what the distance should be. I could do maybe two feet. It's going to take longer to get there, but it would look nice on my, on my drawing, maybe five feet. So it doesn't take quite so long. All right, perfect. So it did the contour command for me. Now I can go back to this plan view. I can do a make 2D, but I'm going to do it of that plus my viewport boundary so I can line these up again later. So this one will actually go a lot faster because it's just a make 2D of the contours. I'm going to uncheck show hidden lines and maintain source layers. I'll go ahead and say OK. There we go. Let me look at it in the top view. Set view and then top. There's all my contours. Uh, all I really care about is right around my building, which would be right here. And why it didn't export my view, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I could line those up later. But I wanted to show you that you could do the contours and export those as part of uh, the drawing as well. So I'll go ahead and leave that for right now. Now it's time to move on and actually create the rendered clay rendering for behind this view uh, altogether. So I'm going to go ahead and type show, which will bring back in that big plane that I created in the first place. Oops. Let me set view back to my plan one view. There we go. And now I need to work, and it's probably easiest if I work in the right side view. Let me go to set view and right. All right, so there I am. So I need to first go through and explode all of the block references. So this is where it gets destructive. So I'm going to type SEL and then block instance, which selects any block instances that are in the, the scene. At this point, I'll go ahead and type explode. And it's going to make a complete mess of my layers. When that's done, I'll hit escape so nothing's selected. Then I'll type again SEL block instance, and I'll get more blocks. Because there are blocks nested within blocks, you have to keep doing this until you get no blocks. Let me go ahead and explode again. Hit escape twice, SEL block instance. There's a few more. Explode. Escape twice, SEL block instance. And at some point, you're going to get to this, where there are no objects to be added to the selection. That's good. That's the way we want it. Now it's time to go ahead and do the split. So I'm going to type split. It says select objects to split. It's <coughs> going to be all except for that really big plane, because we don't need to split that. So I'll hold down Control and deselect that. And then I'll go ahead and hit Enter. 
select cutting objects. That's where that plane comes in. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now this once again can take some time to go through. There's also going to be a number of split fails that are going to happen during this. The reason that those are failing are because they're lights or because they're objects that aren't actually intersecting the plane. They're above or below the plane. And so that's normal. So we have to give this a little bit of time. Once again, I'll pause the recording and then I'll come back when it's, uh, when it's done doing its split. OK, so it just finished its, its split. <clears throat> so at this point, now that it's split, I can go ahead and hide that big plane. So I'll go ahead and type hide again. I could have it on its own layer. That would, that would be another solution. And so now anything that's above that big plane, so anything that's above the split line, needs to be selected and changed to a see-through material, just like last time. The reason that we're doing it this way and, and applying that see-through material is so that when it's a day rendering, the light still casts through the windows and we get the actual shadows as if the whole building were there. So again, it's, the see-through material is a special material that couldn't exist in real life because it's transparent to the eye but blocks sunlight. So it's something that we can do in V-Ray. However, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click from right to left, right down to that point where I get my line. There it is. I've selected essentially everything. There's a little bit more in here. I'm going to hold down Shift to add to the selection and get nice and close to that line, making sure I select all of that. There it is. And I'm going to apply see-through material to this. I don't, however, want to apply the um, see-through material to the glass. That needs to be actually transparent. So I'll come in here and I'll turn off anything that has glass on it. So I'll turn off the glass railing there. And I'll come down here. There's window glass. We'll turn that off. Another window glass. It would help if these were slightly better organized than they are. Okay, I believe I got it all. So all the glass is turned off. Now at this point, I can apply that see-through material. I can go to materials, and I've already downloaded this, uh, but you guys can get it from the course website if you don't have it already. I mean, under resources, if we go to the V-Ray materials library. It is the special materials. There it is, see-through. And you'll download this. There's also a tutorial that walks through how you can actually make it if you want to make it yourself. <coughs> OK, so now I already have that. Um, I'll go ahead and right click on it and say load material. And I'm going to go find that see-through material. It's on my flash drive in my resources folder in V-Ray, V-Ray materials, special materials. And there it is, see-through. And I'll go ahead and load that in. Now, I'm not applying this material to layers. I'm going to apply it to my um, object. So let me find see through. There it is. And I'll right click on it and say apply material to selection. So it's not going on layers. It's just overriding all the materials, uh, no matter what layer they're on. So now that's applied. At this point, I'll go ahead and deselect so that nothing's selected. And I'm going to turn on the window glass. And as I do this, I'm going to say, select objects. Then I'm going to work my way back up to the next window glass here and say, select objects. I'll work my way back up to the next glass and say, select objects. The reason that I'm doing it this way is it's really easy to find which objects you turned off. So I select them all. At this point, anything below the split line, we need to deselect because we want that anything below that split line to act as regular glass, so we'll leave it applied. And I need a very basic transparent material. So I'll just right click on see materials, say create material standard. We can call this one transparent. Nothing special about it other than the transparency value is going to be set to white, which makes it, if we preview it, completely transparent. I'll right click on transparent and say apply material to selection. There it is. So at this point, if I were to render in my plan view, all the materials would show up as normal below the plan view during the render. 
And so that's something that, that is certainly an option uh, if you wanted to render it in full color, if you had materials on the floor, etc. The other option would be to do a rendering as if it were clay. So just kind of a white generic rendering. If you want to do that, uh, we need to assign the materials below the section cut down here. We need to assign them to just a plain white or light gray material. So once again, I will select everything coming up to that, that cut line. And a few more objects here that need to be selected. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'll turn off my glass railing, my window glass, and my second window glass layer. Perfect. Now all of these need to be assigned a basic clay material. So I'll go into my V-Ray materials. I'll create a new material called clay. I'll right click on scene materials, say create material standard. I'll double click and call this clay. And this clay material should have a color of kind of a light gray. If I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, I can come down here and pick an even lighter gray. And if I were to preview it, it looks kind of like a generic gray clay. I'll right click on clay and I'll say apply material to selection. Now all of that except for the glass has that material on it and I'm going to leave the glass normal. So we'll leave that material there as well. So now it's time to go ahead and start doing a rendering. So I'm going to double click on right and move back into the plan view. I want this rendering to be a day <coughs> rendering so you guys can see the light coming through. So before I do the rendering, I'm going to go into my V-Ray options and I'm going to load up the day settings. I don't believe that mine currently is on the day settings. I think it's night settings. So I saved my day settings into my uh, assignment 205 folder. There's my VizOps and I have my day. And we'll go ahead and open that. That reloads all of my day settings for me. So that makes it a little bit easier. And I'm also going to turn on my sun. So let me come over here and let me turn on my sun. So I have that on. I'll come back to the plan view and it's time to start that rendering. I may need to adjust because I converted all the materials to white. It may be just way too bright. So before I do the rendering, I am going to go into my output and get my view aspect and lock it and I'll make this size small just to confirm. And we'll do a quick little small test rendering to see. <coughs> Alright, looks pretty good. I'm going to turn back on, let me clear the views here, ST clear all views. And this upper part of the topography, I'm going to make it the clay so that we're still seeing it behind the building. Uh, that'll help a little bit. So let me go into my materials. Let me go to clay. I'll right click and say apply material to selection. Now that'll be clay as well. And let me try that render one more time. All right, looking pretty good. I'll zoom that in. So I'll go into my V-Ray options. I'll make this a little bit larger. Let's do it at maybe 400. And we'll have another look. The nice thing about clay renders, because they don't have a lot of materials involved, they're generally pretty quick to get through. OK, so if I were to zoom in here a little bit, you can see that all the, the, the light that's coming through from the day rendering is passing through into my building. That's the advantage of doing it with the see-through material, so I can actually see what the interior looks like. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out thus far. Um, there's a few things that I probably could improve, like the places where the walls are cut through. Some places may need a little bit of extra surface, so I could spend some time let me go to ST view, and I'm going to view it in my plan 01 view. Oops. There we go. And if we were to zoom in, 
we may find that there's pieces of these walls that really need to be filled in. And so I could go through, let me come down here, create a new layer, make it active, and then I could actually fill in with surfaces these parts of the walls that weren't filled in. That will help the rendering, uh, but it'll take a little bit of time to go through and, and do them all. But it'll definitely help the, the way that the plan view. Some of them have already been created. I have one over here that I believe has already been created. So you just have to spend a little bit of time and, and add <coughs> where they're appropriate. Uh, looks like there's another one right here. Anyway, you guys don't have to sit and watch me do this. You have plenty of other things to do um, today. But that'll help you get um, the rendering to look a little bit better. When you're all done, you're going to do the high quality rendering. So I go back into my V-Ray options. Whoop, before the rendering, let me switch back to the plan one view. Set view, plan 01. I go into my V-Ray options. And right here, I'd up this. So my height might be 2,000 now. Now that might be a little bit large. We'll go 3,000 on my width. There we go. I'll go ahead and let this render process in the background. And while it's processing in the background, I'm going to go and open up that Illustrator file. So let me jump over into today's folder. There was my Illustrator file. I'll double click to open that. While that's opening, I'm going to come back and make sure that my V-Ray is actually doing some rendering. Good, it's rendering in the background. That's what I want. We'll go back to Illustrator here. Now in Illustrator, my drawing here doesn't all fit entirely on the page. So first thing I'll do is I'll come to my artboard, which looks kind of like a crop tool. It's almost all the way to the bottom of the toolbars here. And I'll adjust the corners of this crop so that they fit to the corners of my viewport. So I'll go from there to there and all the way to there. So I have it on the corners of my viewport. When I'm done, I can just click on the, the black arrow to get out of it. And now it's time to start organizing things. So if I look at my layer stack, I chose to maintain source layers, which means that it's really, really nasty. So in that case, I'm looking for the difference between visible and hidden. So let's start with the uh, visible. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard, and anywhere it says visible as I go through here, I will select it. Remember, you don't have to do it this way. You can choose not to maintain source layers, which will give you far fewer layers in Illustrator, um, which if you're not experienced in Illustrator, can be a lot easier to deal with. So just stick, stick without the <coughs> maintaining source layers. So those are all currently um, the visible layers. I'm going to add a new master layer for visible. I should have done that first. Let me go through and do the visible one more time. All right, all of those visibles are going to go on the visible layer right there. That helps keep things organized. I can minimize the visible layer there. The rest of these are, oops, there is one that I missed. The rest of these are all hidden, so that makes it easy. I'll create another layer for hidden. There's my hidden, and all of these objects will go on the hidden layer. They're all on hidden now. 
visible should be on top of the hidden layer. There we go. So, oops, that's not how they should have been visible. Shouldn't be on the hidden layer, it should be on top of. There we go. Okay, so now everything that is on the hidden layer, I'm going to select by clicking the box. If I, if I follow the layer name all the way over to the side here, I can click next to the circle. There's a little box. I can click that. It will select all the objects. And I'm going to make all of those objects a light gray color. So I'll double click on my stroke color and choose a lightish gray. And then I will come over uh, to my stroke and I'll change the weight to 0 0.25 maybe points. And I'm going to make them all dashed. And I've found that a two point by one point dash looks pretty good. And if I were to deselect now and we were to zoom in, you'd see that things that are hidden are going to show up as little dashed lines. Some of these are kind of irrelevant and could probably be cleaned up. Like, for example, that line there could probably go away. This line here could probably go away. So there's some cleaning up involved. The next thing would be to go through the visible lines. So I'll select all the visible lines. I'm going to make those visible lines black instead of being purple and red and stuff. We'll make them black, I hope. And of course, it doesn't want to let me do it. Let's get that all the way to black. There we go. Now they're all black. And now it would be a matter of going through and cleaning up this drawing a bit. So like the, the plan lines, those are going to be a little bit thicker. I'll go into my stroke weight here, maybe change them to two point. They're a little bit thicker. I could then use the eyedropper tool, select the, eye, the, the line I want to change, and just match it to this line. I could actually go through with my direct select, my white arrow, hold down shift, select lots of lines that represent my floor plan. Like that. Eyedropper tool, and I can match them all to the darker, thicker line here. So I would work my way around the drawing, thickening up those, those lines. The other option would be to do a live paint and actually fill in lines. If you're comfortable with Illustrator, um, you could set that up. And once I have this established, it's time to go back and check on how my rendering went. There we go. It didn't do too bad of a job. So at this point, I'll go ahead and go to my file. Uh, sorry, I'm in V-Ray. We're going to save. I'm not worried about the channels. I just want the, uh, the basic clay render. I'll go into my um, folder for today. And this is my sex plan clay. I'll go ahead and save it. It's, a, it's not quite black and white, so remember I could go into Photoshop and adjust that. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring it straight in. I'll go to File and then Place. And let me jump into today's folder. And there it is. I'll go ahead and place it. Now remember, because we, we made a point to match up the viewports here, it's just a matter of getting this to match up with the sides of my artboard like this. Once I've matched that up, if I press Control-0, maybe even a little bit more, Control-plus, we can see where these line up, and we can see that all of the shadows have been cast the way that they should be, and we're now seeing a nice floor plan. The, the background is probably a little bit strong, and in all reality, I should have put it on its own layer. So let me go ahead and create a new layer for it, and let's move it outside of all the other layers, and we'll put it below the line layers. There it is. And I could also take that object and change the opacity so that it's not quite so strong. Maybe something like that feels a little bit better. Maybe even a little bit more. 
like that. Notice that the shadows are cast correctly on the surrounding land as well as being cast correctly on the interior of the space as well. So this is the whole process. I know I went through it a little bit faster today than I did last class, but this is exactly the same thing that I did yesterday, or, or excuse me, last Wednesday. The only difference here is that I've elected to, um, to cut the section horizontally rather than vertically. So it's the same process. Uh, so today, my, my ideal goal would be for you guys to get your floor plan out. If you don't feel like you're there and you're still working on your renderings, that's fine. But recognize that you are going to have to have these drawings as part of the final project. Okay? So I'm going to turn you loose and give you as much time as possible today to work. Question for everybody or question for you? Okay. I will come help you in a second. Any questions for everybody? No? All right. 